First thing that I want to tell you is that uh, I don't want you to believe anything that I say, nor to trust me. I, the human design system is an empirical system. It's something that proves itself. Anybody who's ever worked with it knows that. So it's something for you to wait and see. I'm going to take you through a great deal of information. Before I do that, on the 3rd of January 1987 until the 11th of January 1987 on the island of Ibiza in the Mediterranean, I was penetrated by a voice. I was given all of this information, so I'm a messenger in this case, and I'm just here to share with you the knowledge that was given to me, and this knowledge is the human design system. In order to take you to a point where you can understand how individual design affects each and every one of you, I've got to take you through a lot of information. Basically, when I'm here to explain to you and share with you is the duality of the universe and the fact that the duality of the universe is also the duality that is in all of us. According to the physicists, sometime about 15 billion years ago, there was an event that they call the Big Bang. That is, uh, there was a moment 15 billion years ago when all the material of the universe, all the mass of the universe, all of it, stars, trees, birds and bees, you and me, was all compressed into an object the size of my fist. At the moment that that object was ignited, an enormous amount of material spread out into the expanding universe. And this material, as it spread out into the expanding universe, was divided into two groups of things. The first side that we're going to look at is the yin side. The scientists call them quarks, and there's six of them. Up, down, strange, charm, beauty, and truth. Nice names that the scientists gave to them. The reality is that they have discovered and proven five of them. The sixth one they just have evidence for. We discovered within the last month that there is evidence that truth exists. The reality is that these six quarks, as the universe expanded outwards, the, the universe began to cool from the intense heat of the beginning. And as it began to cool, these six quarks came together in two groups of three. We call these neutron and proton. And the neutron and the proton are at the center of everything that we call atomic in nature, which means what we are and uh, this building and our planet and everything on it and all the stars and all the galaxies. All of that material is atomic in nature. The other side that was created at the beginning, they're called leptons. They thought for a long time that this was just pure energy. And these leptons were also divided into six parts. And the three electrons, and the three different types of neutrinos. And as the universe began expanding outwards, and as the universe began to cool, what happened was that this neutron and proton came together with the electron, and they formed the atom. Now, everything that we can think of is atomic in nature. Everything that we can think of is atomic in nature. Everything that we think of that has mass, that has shape, that has form, everything in the entire universe is atomic in nature. There's a joke, though, and there's always a joke. The joke is that if you add up all the material of all the stars and all the galaxies and all the trees and all the birds and bees, you only end up with 10%, you only end up with 10 of the mass of the universe, 10% of the material, one-tenth. There's an enormous, enormous amount of material that is not atomic in nature. I'm here really to talk to you about neutrinos. My joke is that I'm a neutrino salesman because the reality is that the neutrino is one of the most incredible things. Neutrinos are only made in stars. They're really the breath of stars. They're the byproduct of stars. There are so many neutrinos, it's hard to imagine. There's three trillion, that's three million million neutrinos pass through everything, everywhere, all the time, at near the speed of light. You know, try to imagine that. You've got three million million of these particles and they go through everything, everywhere, all the time at near the speed of light. And what makes the neutrino absolutely extraordinary is that they discovered in the 80s that the neutrino bears an infinitesimal mass. This is very important. It's not pure energy. It's information. And that information is penetrating through all of us all the time. And it is programming us, as you will see. The second part of our story is more mystical. 
in my experience with what I call the voice, I was told that the whole universe is a living entity, that the whole universe is an unborn fetus, that it's still within the womb, that it does not know what made it, that it has not come out into the world yet. And in the information that I was given by the voice, what I was told about was the crystals of consciousness. According to what the voice told me, in the beginning, when we had all the material of the universe compressed into a single object, something banged into it. That is, the beginning of the universe was a conception, a moment of conception. And inside the yang seed and inside the yin egg were two crystals. Now I call them crystals because that's what I was told. That is, uh, I've never seen them. But the term crystal is important because it gives you an idea about how they work. So imagine for a moment that you have these two crystals, one in the seed, one in the egg, that bang into each other. They expand out into the universe. What happens is that those crystals inside, they shatter. They shatter into so many different facets, so many different pieces, it's beyond our ability to imagine it because the crystals of consciousness are in everything. Every bird, every bee, every plant, every tree, every human being, every animal bears crystals of consciousness. These crystals of consciousness are within us. Here, in the Ajna Center, what they call the third eye. Here is the design crystal. This comes from the original yin. This comes from the egg. And the design crystal manifests our biogenetic vehicle. That is, the design crystal builds these bodies, directs these bodies in their development, in their growth, what you look like, really what you've inherited as a genetic information, is all lodged within the design crystal that sits here. In the head center, in the crown head chakra at the top of the head, is the personality crystal. This comes from the original seed. This comes from the original yang. And this personality crystal manifests who you think you are. Your personality. Or more likely who you think you think you, think you are. And here, in the G center, in the sternum, here is the magnetic monopole. The magnetic monopole is the thing that holds us together. It gives us literally our sense of separateness, the illusion of our separateness. It also pulls everything else towards us. You could call it love. But the magnetic monopole is like the arm that goes up from a streetcar. That is, it hooks you into your geometry. It is a monopole. It only attracts it hooks you into your geometry and rides you along in your life. It is your driver here. If I could give you an analogy. Imagine for a moment that we have a limousine. Nice, lovely car, let's call it a Jaguar. I have a nice car, nice interior, leather seats, all kinds of goodies inside. That's the design crystal. That's the body. Just the body. It could be a nice body, it could be not, but it's just the body. And then, then you have the driver here, the magnetic monopole. The magnetic monopole knows exactly where it's going. It's the chauffeur of the car. It knows the road, it knows the machine, it knows where it has to go. Nobody has to tell it anything. It knows exactly where it has to go. And then there's the personality crystal that sits up here in the crown head chakra that personality crystal that thinks it thinks. This personality crystal, this is the passenger in the back seat of the car. It's not the car who you think you are. It's not the car. It's not the driver. It's the passenger in the back seat. And you know what a good passenger is supposed to do, huh? You look out the windows and watch the world go by. The human design system is a synthesis like the television set. Nobody knows who invented the television set. It's just made up of all different kinds of things that suddenly came together in a synthesis that had enormous impact on the world. The reality is that the human design system is a synthesis, and it's a synthesis of knowledge that is both ancient and modern. It belongs to the, the whole planet because it comes from all the major cultures of the planet. And when you look at this particular mandala, because this represents the various components of the human design system, this synthesis then comes alive. But before I talk to you about the components here, 
I want you to imagine something for a moment. Many years ago, somebody asked me what I thought about astrology, and I said, well, prove it to me. There was nobody around that was going to prove that to me. And the reality is that all these years later, I end up in this situation in which I teach something that is based on astrological information, so I'm going to have to prove it to you. So let me do that, and let me give you a proof for astrology. First of all, I told you about the neutrinos, and the neutrinos are only made in stars. Our sun, by the way, is a star, and our sun produces nearly 70% of the neutrinos that we receive. The reality is that all around this wheel, we have an enormous star field everywhere, and all that star field is doing is it's streaming information towards us, neutrino information, traveling at near the speed of light at a density that's far beyond our ability to understand. All of that information streaming through and when it's streaming through, imagine that it's all around the outside of this circle. It has to come through here. I told you about these crystals that are inside of us. Imagine what it's like. Imagine I have two crystals in my hands. Well, let's call them diamonds. And they're cut differently. That is, they have different facets, different shapes to them. And I take these two crystals and I put the same, exactly the same source of light through these two crystals. Because they're cut differently. What comes out is different. That's us. That's all of us. All of us have a slightly different cut to the crystals that are within us. And as we receive the same information, and we're all receiving the same information, we translate that information uniquely. Imagine what happens when the planet Mars gets in the way. And you've got this stream of information pouring through. And the planet Mars gets in the way. I tell you, if you've got a red car and you've got a white car and they bang into each other, you're going to get a little white paint on the red car. And you're going to get a little red paint on the white car. And that's called communication. And when you have this stream of information going through Mars, it's going to have an interaction with Mars. It's going to be changed by Mars and it's going to come through your crystals and it's going to leave off that information. This wheel, the outside of this wheel, you can see there's all these numbers going around the outside of this wheel. There are 64 of these numbers. They're from the I Ching, the Book of Changes, ancient Chinese wisdom. Really a miracle when you think about it. The Chinese, thousands and thousands of years ago, knew that the basic configuration for what it is to be human was the 64 times 6. That is, the Chinese understood that there were 64 basic themes. Those are the themes that are going around this wheel. And out of those 64 themes, there are six sub-themes. In 1958, when they discovered the human genetic code, lo and behold, they found the same story. That is, they found 64 codons of six groups of amino acids each. It's exactly the same mathematics. The human design system is a way to understand your genetics in a way that is available to everyone, because it is a logic system. You do not have to be a mystic. You do not have to be spiritual. You simply have to be able to follow the logic of things. The reality is that all of these gates going around the outside, they're oriented to the zodiacal wheel. They're oriented to the zodiacal wheel because it's through the wheel of the zodiac, the astrological wheel, that the calculations are made for the design system. And any time that you make a calculation, if you place a planet here in the middle of Vita, in the middle of Aries, the reality is it's going to be in this 21st gate, 21st hexagram, rather than just being in Aries. In other words, this information is much more precise. There are more groups involved. There's more exact information. And this information here, this 21, this 21 has a place here inside of the body graph. One of the unusual features about the design system is that the moment that you take the calculations of the planets, not only can you find out specifically where they are in terms of this genetic matrix I Ching matrix around the outside, but you can place that information directly into the body. And as you'll see, it makes an enormous difference in the capacity to be able to understand not only our own nature, but to be able to understand our relationship with the universe itself, with other people in our lives. Basically, the human design system is about recognizing that we all are integrated with other people all the time, and to see what kind of effect they have on us, what kind of effect they have on our conditioning. Here, within the body graph, there are nine energy centers. These energy centers are based in the Hindu Brahman chakra tradition. And between these centers are channels. These channels are from the Zohar, from the Kabbalah. 
and they connect these energy centers together. And you can see, for example, that here at the top, the 64, and here at the bottom, the 47, these numbers, they represent the gates, the opening of these channels. And if you had a planet in 64, which is over here, or in 47 over here, that would open up this channel. In other words, where everything is placed in the wheel gives you immediate access to be able to place that information inside of the body. This is an individual ray of calculation chart. And this individual ray of calculation chart, you can see that it has a very unusual feature because this chart is made up of two wheels and it has a body graph in the center. And these two wheels are very important. That is, this wheel over here represents a calculation that will tell you the nature of your design crystal. And this wheel over here will tell you the nature of your personality crystal. That is the basic information, the database. And then this database gets integrated here into the center, into the body graph. But before I can tell you that, or I'll tell you about that, I have to tell you the strangest thing I tell you tonight. That is the conception sequence, how life begins, how life comes into the world. You know, one of the things that, that I teach and one of the things that I share with people is that the moment that you recognize that this is an empirical system is the moment that you will discover that you really do not have any choice and life is like that. Children come into the world when they come into the world. These crystals of consciousness, they're not always in bodies. There are so many of them, many more than one can imagine that are outside of bodies than in, and if you could really see the picture of this planet, you would see that this planet is nothing but a shimmering field of them. There are trillions and trillions and trillions of these crystals out of manifestation. The personality crystals that sit in the crown chakra, who we think we think we are, these personality crystals of consciousness, when they're not in manifestation, when they're not in a body, they are in the atmosphere of the earth. They're always moving around, passing through. Sometimes they come together in large bundles, and when the information, the neutrino stream passes through those bundles, people think they're talking to the Virgin Mary, or God, or Seth, or Zeus, or whatever it is that's common, UFOs, depending on the tradition. The crystals of the design that create the forms, when they're not in manifestation, they're within the mantle of the earth. And when they're in the mantle of the earth and when they're outside of a form embedded into the design crystal, there's a magnetic monopole. Remember the magnetic monopole is a driver. At the moment that there's going to be a conception, the magnetic monopole of the male puts out a frequency. And in putting out that frequency, a design crystal and its magnetic monopole comes up from the mantle of the earth, follows that frequency line, comes into the male body, into the solar plex center, this is the emotional center, it's going to move along this channel. As you will see, this channel here, the 59, the 6, this is the channel of reproduction, this is a channel of producing children. At the moment of orgasm, it is the design crystal with its magnetic monopole, with its driver that's in exactly the sperm that does not break into the egg, the egg opens up for it. And the moment it starts, the moment that that seed is there within the egg, all there is there is the seed and the egg and the design crystal. And that design crystal takes the neutrino stream, it pours through the mother and it pours through that design crystal and that design crystal starts building the biogenetic vehicle, it starts building the body of the fetus, it starts building the body of the child. If it's going to be a normal pregnancy, if it's going to be a pregnancy that is a nine-month term, and I will talk about the others in a moment, it's going to be a normal pregnancy for approximately the first six months. The only thing, the only thing in that fetus is its design crystal building its body. It does not have a personality crystal. In the language of Christianity, there's no soul in the body. You know, we live in an age in which there is an enormous discussion about the nature of abortion and whether it is correct or not correct to take a life before it comes into the world. As far as I know, as far as this knowledge knows, you know, there is no personality, there is no soul in the fetus if it's going to be a normal pregnancy, pregnancy until the sixth month. At that moment, at that point, the personality is called into the fetus by the fetus monopole, pulls it in, pulls in its own soul, pulls in its personality, 
And then for approximately 88 or 89 days, that personality has a chance to hook into the body. And then there's birth. These two wheels are calculations that are made at the end of a process. And it begins with the birth calculation that is here. This is like a normal astrological calculation at the time of birth, the place of birth. And this calculation over here, this gives you the calculation for the personality. That is for the personality at the moment of birth. Because at the, at the moment of birth, the personality is ready to deal with the world. I was told in my experience with the voice that 88 degrees of the sun before birth, it's between 88 and 89 days depending on the sun cycle, 88 degrees of the sun before birth, the personality enters the body. If you go back 88 degrees from the birth time, you come to the exact time and the exact point that the soul enters the body. And that's the moment when the body is ready for its personality. That's the moment that the neocortex of the brain is ready to take in the personality, to allow the personality to begin to function. So we have here two sets of calculations. A birth calculation that gives us the data of the personality, and we have a prenatal calculation that gives us our genetic information that tells you the nature of the body before the personality came in so we know what the personality is going to live inside. Remember the personality is the passenger and it's the passenger inside of this design vehicle. Now you can see in these wheels, I take an example here in this design wheel, the design, the prenatal is always coated red. The personality, what you have access to, is always coated black. I've trained a lot of psychiatrists and psychologists, a lot of therapists, because through this side, through the design side, what's red, you can always see the unconscious at work. Because everything from this wheel operates unconsciously within us. In this calculation, once the astrological calculation is made, here's a case where, for example, the planet Uranus in Gemini, it's in a position that places it in the 35th gate and if you move over here, you can see the 35 here, and you can see that this channel is colored in halfway. That is, that the moment that a gate is activated, one of these positions, then automatically the channel is open from that gate, but not all the way, only partially. All this information over here then gets translated along with the Earth. And the Earth is always opposite the Sun. The Earth is where we get our grounding. It's where we get our stability. It's a very important access. So here, on this side, you have the design information, and then you come over to this side and you have the personality calculation. Again, all this information gets translated. Here, for example, is Uranus and the node. They're in 45. Here's the 45 colored in in black. So when you're looking at this chart, when you're looking at the body graph, you get to see the two sets of information the unconscious genetic information that you inherited from your mother and father and your grandparents going all the way back in your genetic pool. And it's also the information that operates at an unconscious level. And you can always see that unconscious because it's the red in the chart. On this side over here, the birth calculation, this is the potential of the personality. And this potential of the personality, where you have access, is colored in in black. Inside, here, is where you get to see the individual human life. It's not the separate pieces of information. It's how these sets of information integrate together into a body graph. 